Hi everyone, today we will talk about recursion. Now so far we've been using for loops to repeat the same action as many times as we'd like, but this is not the only way. We can also use something called recursive functions. Now in computer science, recursion happens when we call a function within itself, meaning the function call is not just outside the function, but it is also inside it. My favorite example of recursion is matryoshka, which is a Russian traditional doll that hides smaller and smaller dolls inside it. Now, once we reach the very last doll, the one that can't be opened anymore, we actually reach something called the base case or the base condition. For example, if we want to recursively write all the positive even numbers smaller or equal to 8, we will get a list of 8, 6, 4 and 2, where 2 represents the base case. Now let's see how it looks like in code. We will define a function called even nums, which takes in a numeric value of our choice. And first, we will tackle the base case with if num equals 2, then it means that we've reached the end of the sequence and we will simply return our number. However, if this is not the case and our number is not equal to 2, we will need an else clause where we return a call to the even nums function and we pass our number minus 2. Now, additionally, we also want to print our number at the very top of our function, so print num. And then once we do it, we can scroll all the way to the bottom, we can leave our function and we will call even nums on the number 8. Now let's go ahead and run this code. Perfect, so it looks like we're getting the results we've expected where our base case is printed last. But we can always go the extra mile and we can tackle odd numbers as well. So if num modulo 2 doesn't have the remainder of 0. And in this case, we would like to print a message of please enter an even number. And then additionally, we will turn this if statement into an else if statement. And now even if we call this function on an odd number, let's say 9, and we run this code, and then instead of getting an error, we're simply getting a message to improve our input. Cool, so we've seen how recursive functions work, but are they really better than for loops? For this, we will look at another code example using the Fibonacci sequence. Now, Fibonacci numbers are a very special sequence where the next value always equals the sum of its two previous values. So for example, 0 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, and so on until infinity. We can find this sequence in nature, in Pascal's triangle, in sacred geometry, and pretty much anywhere we look, including the Mona Lisa. But how exactly do we compute it? Let's consider a function that takes in a positive numeric value. This value represents the index of the Fibonacci number we want to return. So for example, at index zero, we have the number zero. At index 3, we have the number 2. At index 8, we have the number 21, and so on. And we will begin with the recursive function. And we will call it Fibonacci with a capital F. We can then pass an index value of our choice to this function. And as usual, we will tackle the base case first. Now, if our index is either smaller or equal to 1, we will then simply return the index itself, which is exactly what we've done in our previous example. However, if this is not the case inside our else clause, we will return an instance of our Fibonacci function call where we pass our index minus one. And then this takes care of the previous value. Now, additionally, we will add another instance of the Fibonacci function, but this time we will pass it on index minus two. And of course, my head is probably blocking it. And surprise, surprise, our function is complete. Now let's go ahead and check if it works. So at the bottom, we will print an instance of Fibonacci. And at least at first, we will check it on index zero. Now, as you guys have seen before, this should return the number zero. 
Perfect! We are getting zero in return. So let's boost it to index three. This should return the number two. Perfect! And just to be extra cautious, let's also call it on the index eight. And this should return 21. Ah, perfecto! Bravo! Now, in terms of iteration, we will define a brand new function called Fibonacci with a lowercase f this time. We will also pass an index value to this function, but in order to start looping, we need to account for the first pair of Fibonacci numbers. We will call this pair sequence, and we will assign it to a list with 0 and 1. And now we can go ahead and start looping. So for i in range index, we will append a brand new value to our sequence. So we will type sequence.append, where the value would be the sum of the last item in our sequence, represented by index minus 1, plus the item in our second last sequence, represented by minus 2. And then we can go ahead and exit the for loop, and we will return sequence in the index of minus 1. But note that since we started with two values rather than one, if we will call Fibonacci on index 0, it will skip this for loop altogether and will return the last value of our sequence, which is 1, while we're actually looking for 0. So the way to fix it is quite simple. Instead of returning the last value, we will simply return the second last value. And now our iteration function is complete. Let's go ahead and call it at the very bottom. We will simply copy this print statement and we will refactor the capital F to a lowercase f. Let's go ahead and run this script. Beautiful. So both our functions return the same value, the correct value, but then how do we know which one of these is more efficient? For this, we will first import the time module, and then we can record the time that takes for both our functions to run. So right above our function calls, we will type the kind of function we're dealing with. In the first case, that would be recursion. And right before we call it, we will record the current time with time.time. .time. We can then assign it to a variable called rec, and then right after our function call, we will print an additional statement, speed, to which we will concatenate the string instance of the current time minus the time we have recorded earlier inside a variable called rec. And we will, of course, do the same for our iteration function. Cool. Now let's run it and find out once and for all which is faster, iteration or recursion. And before we do this, I want you guys to make a guess and then we will see if it turned out. So let's go ahead and click on run. And if your guess was iteration, you got it because it is actually twice as fast as recursion. Good job. So why it is so important to us then? Recursion is a very basic computer science concept. It helps us divide a very big problem into smaller subproblems, which we can easily solve one at a time. We call this process divide and conquer, and you guys will encounter it a lot in your computer science studies. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave me a like, maybe leave me a comment or subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell or share this tutorial with so, so many people. Now, thanks again, and I will see you guys very soon in a brand new machine learning tutorial.